far as uh, who do you view as the most or what types of clinical health care providers do you view as the most uh, attractive targets right now for health care investing? Yeah, maybe I'll start. So um, the way that we're thinking about clinical outcomes is is being able to successfully manage through this value-based care environment. And so women's health care, fertility are, are one of those places. Uh, you're seeing great trends, you know, in those markets. Um, one, just from a, a patient education perspective um, and providing care, specific, particularly to, to rural communities that haven't actually had access to these types of services before. And because typically you know, it's a nine month period in which you're testing an outcome, it's, it's very applicable for value-based care today. Um, and so what you're seeing is these, these types of providers implement um, some of the AI ML technologies to manage their population, uh, the data and analytics to inform their reimbursement. And so it's, it's really become table stakes. If, if companies and platforms are not incorporating this, it's really not gonna be interesting. Um, because the investment that's required and where the market's going. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that, that's really where we're, where, where we're focused today. I, I, I'll go for the um, underdog, the endocrinologist, who was never really in the spotlight and now is coming into the spotlight because of the rapid adoption of the git glip drugs like Munjaro, Ozempic, mm-hmm. and others. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of discovery being made on the uh, brain-gut relationship and how behavioral health is impacted, um, not just tactically by psychiatrists prescribing Ozempic to counter the weight gain from antidepressants, but also because these medications are shown to reduce compulsions, reduce urges, not just for eating, but also for smoking and for substance use and, and, and other things. So I think the role of the endocrinologist is the one that's probably evolving the fastest from where it was to where we believe it's going. Interesting, thanks. I would say, um, and it's not shocking, but mental health. We have a massive mental health crisis in this country and there's still, I'd say, a significant supply demand imbalance between uh, clinicians in mental health and the need. Uh, We have an investment in a business called Mantra Health, which is a virtual mental health clinic for college and university students. During the pandemic, which was a blip, I I understand, but more than 50% of uh, students on college campuses were clinically depressed. So one out of every two persons was clinically depressed. So, you you know, it's just a massive um, thing to understand, right? And so if you think about that, we don't have enough clinicians, and that's where technology and uh, virtual care can come in 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 terms of aiding into that need. Tom? Yeah, I think mental health and then broader behavioral health are, are great channels alongside with women's health for a number of dynamics, growing TAMs, access to reimbursement, but also there's a lot of room in there for the value-based care dynamics that Jonathan mentioned too that are here to stay. Uh, beyond that, just to you know, supplement some more, I think the PPM playbook, the physician practice management playbook that we were talking about earlier, that's here to stay too. It's probably a, in lower and smaller funds than the Blackstones of the world, but chasing that next specialty uh, and creating these regional roll-ups and, and kind of a, a good, strong brand within a portion of the country, I mean, that's here to stay in, in cardiology and a bunch of other fields that we're looking at now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not along the clinical care perspective. But if you think about what we're discussing, you know, all these things require lots of data and analytics. And so what are the platforms that are driving that dynamic in the market? And so the way that we've approached it is, you know, outside of a clinical perspective, we've invested in those types of companies that are benefiting from those megatrends. I mean, AI is certainly a megatrend. Um, In order for AI to be effective, you need to have clean, interoperable data. And, and that's not an easy thing. Um, and so there's a company that we have $2 billion invested in called Innovalon. It's got the largest data lake of interoperable patient records and data. And so what it does is makes the connections across the continuum to say patient A, when saw this physician, it had this outcome, it went to this referral, it was prescribed this medication, and this was the outcome. In order to be able to analyze that, that is a really powerful thing, but if you don't have clean data, none of it works. And so what we're trying to do is find companies that are benefiting from those megatrends that will end up informing the clinical outcomes that are needed in this new environment. And and that's kind of where we're, we're spending time today.